Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode of my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you with me onto Lightroom Classic and I talk you through my thoughts on an image, my workflow, and any mistakes that I might make along the way so that you don't have to. Now, this week, actually, before I start, this week I missed a week because I took a week off. My first time ever taking a week off since September 2017. And I've released a video every single Sunday and I decided, you know what? I want to take a break and it was great to take that break but it also felt a small bit strange on a Sunday evening I didn't have a video to go out but thanks for everybody who messaged me I haven't disappeared but yeah it's good to notice I suppose that you know people watch my videos and expect my videos as part of Sundays so back to today so I decided to go out for an adventure because I had some really nice conditions I had gappy clouds I had fleeting light so I went to a location that I've been to many times before but what I wanted to do with the video was to go through the important part for me which is shooting with intention and also shooting towards the edit. So on the particular day I went to a place called Kilcray Friary and it's a place that I've been to many many times over the years. If you've been following this channel you have seen it many times before. Now but on that day I wanted to do one particular thing. I wanted to wait for the light to be able to move through the scene and just light up my subject. That would give me an opportunity to have a dark and bright area within the image. And I took many shots during the day. I had some great conditions, but there's one particular shot where the light was exactly what I was looking for. So I'm going to jump over here onto the computer, go into Lightroom Classic, and I'm going to talk you through every step of my process. Let's go. Now, before I begin into this, I want to show you something which is quite interesting. So I said I was going to shoot with intention and what I wanted was a particular type of light in a particular spot within the image. Now, if I give you a look here on a folder I've created with three images, okay? So here is a raw file of the scene. And as you can see, it's a stunning scene. I've got some beautiful clouds and I've got a great crop. But for me, there was no layering and no light and shadow in the image. Now, the next image that I took after that, you'll see the movement in the clouds. Not that much of movement, but still being lit up completely in the scene. And the image then that I'd really wanted was for light to be on this area here and then darkness in front of me. And I didn't have to wait long because of movement in the clouds. And here was the image. And this is the image that I want to edit today. What I really like about this on the raw file anyway, for, for a start, is I've got a natural darkening of the area here with the crop in front of me and I've got this sky and then the light is just in the central band of the image. So just wanted to show you that the importance of waiting for the right conditions when you are shooting for intention because what I'd wanted to try and create here is exactly this. I could have done that in post-processing but of course I wanted to try and catch it in the field and I wanted to shoot for the edit. So we'll close off on this here and we'll go into Lightroom and as you can see here now there is my image. And the immediate thing for me when I struck me on this shot was I really liked these clouds, the way they were moving at the top of the sky. I really liked the crop as well and also I purposely positioned myself for this tram line here which then brings you right into the subject. So from the first thing that I'm going to do as always I'm going to look and say okay into my basic panel do I need to fix my horizon? Is my horizon straight? So I'll come in here to this and I can then say okay let's have a look at this area which is the important part for me that's going to be the vertical so if I just slightly adjust that now I know that's particularly straight and the difference here is 0.56 on that scale. So that's the first thing I know that's done right. Second then is when I come in to do my edit on the image and if you've watched these episodes before what I'll generally do is I'll hit into the auto button because it can do quite a lot for you now these days. So I'm going to click into the auto and see what it decides to do and what it's done here is it has brightened up the entire image. Now I'm losing this so if I give you a look at the before and the after the, the difference between the two of these here is really really adjusted I suppose or it's reduced but from the most part what it's done here I do like I like what it's done with the sky I do like what it's brightened up the image and you can see all the detail that I have up here in the histogram now from the shadows point of view here which is showing me these are blacker than black so I can say okay am I going to adjust those so I bring those up just ever so slightly that gives the image a bit of a lift okay so from that point in view, there's nothing else really to do here on the image. I could say, okay, it's perfectly fine. But, like I say, I wanted to 
and shoot for the in, uh, intention. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the sky because I want to keep this light here in the center and I want to kind of darken down the sky and then I definitely want to darken down the crop as beautiful as it is. I want to bring more and bring out the whole difference of what I want to try and create here between the uh, bright and the dark. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select my sky and that's going to select my sky here. And the important thing, and I've shown this on a couple of recent uh, videos, is when you start looking at this, you can get a bleed. So if I bring down my exposure here on this for argument's sake, it'll bring down the sky, but it's also creating a halo effect around the structure. It's not that bad on this image, but it is there nonetheless. So to avoid that, all you have to do is come up here, hit these three dots, and then you go intersect mask again with sky. And what that does is it makes a micro adjustment and takes off the bleed that it had. So now all I'm affecting is just the sky, nothing else. And there's none of that haloing that you would have seen a moment ago. So that's the first thing I want to do. And what I want to achieve on that is I want to bring down my highlights on the sky and I want to bring the exposure down slightly. And then I'm just going to add in a touch of T-haze. And by adding in a touch of T-haze, you can see now that sky becomes a lot darker. Okay, that's the first thing I want to do. The second thing then is I want to go back in here and create a new mask. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a linear gradient. And I want to bring that linear gradient holding down shift will allow me to be able to keep this perfectly straight. And then I want it more or less around there, kind of a soft enough. And I want to bring that up to the area that I wanted to be dark. So you can see this is the area here. And then all I'm going to do is go into this and I'm going to bring down my exposure back to where I would have wanted that to be. And now all of a sudden you can see that the difference in the image is really starting to pop. It's exactly what I wanted to achieve and it's now becoming more closer to what was there from when I photographed the shot. So I can bring down my exposure. I can bring down my blacks ever so slightly. I don't want to go too much and then bring down my shadows as well. So by doing that, now what I have is a darker area on the base and a more deeper colored sky. And plus you bring out those textures as well in those clouds. Then the next thing I want to do from here is go in and I want to change my crop because as nice as that sky is, I think the top part up here is pretty much lost. So I'm going to take it from here. Now I get all of my plant in front of me and I get the sky from the main part that I want to have. But moreover, this now the subject here is pretty much in the center of the image. So I'm going to just expand this out, get as much real estate as I possibly can. And taking this down here, like so. And now just making sure I place that in the image. Now, when I look at the overall image here, again, I could be done, but I want to enjoy, do one other thing is I want to add a slight vignette to the image. Now, when you come down here into effects, you've got your post crop vignetting. So if you bring this to the left hand side, it'll darken out the edges. And what that's doing now is it's bringing more, again, emphasis into the center of the image, the star of the show, which is my Friary, Kilcray, Friary. So from that point of view, that's perfectly fine. And then the final thing that I want to do, as always, is go in and say, okay, do I need to look at denoise? Is there noise within the image? Now, the settings here, by the way, I shot this at one one thousand of a second. I was at F8 and ISO 100. And the reason I shot it at one one thousand of a second is because I wanted to get a fast shutter speed to make sure none of these barleys, or I think it's barley, were going to blur in the wind because it was quite windy. So if I now come up here to the sky, and have a look. Okay, it is reducing a bit of noise, but what it's also showing me is that I've got a sensor spot here. So I'm going to enhance that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to do my usual trick, um, which is, no, oh, why was that not done? That has happened as well before, so I don't know. I need to look into that, but we run the denoise anyway. So I'm going to go back into my basics. I'm going to take my dehaze. I'm going to whack it all the way up. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see there was the sensor spot that I would have spotted. So I come into this here. I'm going to heal that. Just need a tiny, tiny, tiny dot. That's done here. And now if I take a look around the place, okay, there may be one here. Probably not, but let's take that out. And then coming up to the overall aspect of the sky, I don't see any that are here. Now I think I am okay from that point of view. So yeah, now what I can do is come back out here, take off my dehaze just by double clicking. And you can see then that once I fill 
and fit the screen, there is my finished image. Now, finally, I want to do is look at my histogram and see what more can I do? What more can I get out of the image? So it's telling me that these are quite black and they are. So I'm going to bring those up ever so slightly just so they're not blacker than black. And uh, my whites, I can bring those up here and I can also take my highlights back up slightly and I can also then increase my exposure slightly as well. Now if I go too far in the exposure I'm losing the darkness that I would have had because it's doing overall on the image so I'm going to reduce that back down and what I am going to do is I'm going to take my whites and I'm going to bring my whites up and that's going to affect my whites only and then just take my blacks back up here slightly and there we have it. The interesting thing for me is that it has auto added vibrance of 11. If I take the vibrance off, it doesn't make much of a difference. You know, I think I always try and add in a small bit of vibrance in here because you're shooting in raw. But yeah, that is definitely a nice image and I'm happy with the conditions that I had and I'm moreover happy that I was able to shoot for the edit. So. I hope you enjoyed uh, this insight into my edit of this particular image and um, be sure to join me next week. I'm back now again to a regular service. I take you to a waterfall that I have gone to many, many times before. But what I want to try and show in that video is how it is easy to improve by repetition. So going to the same place over and over again and practicing your skills. It gives you a huge opportunity to be able to learn because you know the area quite well. I've done this before when I've gone to Ballycotton, but now I'm going to do it from a waterfall point of view. So thank you very much as always for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Like I said, if it's your first time on the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and I hope I'm lucky enough for you to join me next Sunday. And until then, schlange voll.